Welcome back to language. Today's actually a fun one because these are some different types of words that I think you're going to really like. I'm just going to pull this a little closer, maybe help with that glare and so you can see it a little better. We are going to learn about antonyms and homonyms. Now, I, I, I'm i pretty sure you learned about homonyms in fourth grade because I just taught a lesson on homonyms, <laughs> homonyms, homonyms to the fourth graders. Uh, two days ago, so I don't know if you learned those from Mrs. Carnes last year or not, but you're gonna learn them again today. So antonyms are really easy. They're really fun. Antonyms are just an opposite choice, okay? Antonyms, just an opposite choice. So antonyms are opposites, okay? Antonyms are opposites. Synonyms are the same, okay? Synonyms are the same. Antonyms are opposite. Synonyms, same. Antonyms, opposite. You can remember synonym starts with an S, which means the or same starts with an S. Antonyms start with a vowel. Opposite starts with a vowel, okay? Antonyms, opposite. So really easy. This is actually, if you want, I am on page number, let me look and see. I'm on page number 248 in your language book. So if you want to do the first five with me, on page 248, you are welcome to go get your language book and a pencil right now because I'm going to do the first five from your list on that page. Ready? Pause, go. Okay, so on page number 248, you have an entire word bank of antonyms and 15 words that you have to match the opposite word choices with. Pretty easy, right? So the opposite of polite would be rude. My marker will write, okay? If you are not polite, you are probably rude, okay? The antonym of quick or the opposite of quick would be what? I actually wanna make sure I give you the right word. Let me get my paper. It would be, the opposite of quick would be slow. Okay? The opposite of whisper, the antonym of whisper would be to scream. I know, this is so hard. It's really stretching your brains. I know, I know. Okay, the opposite of narrow or the antonym of narrow is wide. Okay, this is where coming with your good choices, your good word choices is gonna be very helpful because the opposite of narrow is not fat, okay? It is not fat, it is wide. If you have a narrow street, it's really, it's hard to drive, you can't get more than one car. If you have the opposite of a narrow street, it's super wide and you can drive five cars along it, okay? This is where getting the best word choice that we did two days ago, that's where this helps you with your antonyms and your homonyms, okay? And then sick, the opposite or the antonym of sick would be healthy, okay? So always choose your best words. Now here's why antonyms are good to know, okay? When you're writing or speaking, you want to, as we have talked about so many times, create a word picture in your brain for your readers and your audience, okay? A, a really strong way to create some sort of word picture or some sort of point or to help people understand is to use antonyms, to use opposites, to compare and contrast, okay? We do that when we read, okay? Because authors use it as a writing skill to help you understand and think through things. So we are reading things that other authors have con contrasted or given the opposite of to help us understand something better. Then as a writer, we want to choose those strong antonyms to help our readers get a better word, word picture, okay? So if I were describing a character as an author and I, if there was like some kind of dialogue and you didn't want to be mean, okay? and you didn't want to say something directly or if you want your if you want your reader to think about things which is going to grab their attention and it's a better story if they have to put pick, if they have to put pieces together themselves then you would say something about well billy was certainly not polite to his teacher whenever she asked him to do his homework okay and it gives you a little bit more interest than just saying billy was rude to his teacher okay do you see how using the antonym and the opposite of he was certainly not polite Okay, that's a little more interesting than just saying he was rude, right? So that's a really powerful way to write and use your words to capture the attention of your audience. That's why we learn antonyms, okay? They're really easy. You learn opposites in kindergarten, so now you're just choosing the best word choice and the strongest word choice to go with your, your original word or to compare and contrast.
Okay, let's move over here to homonyms. Homonyms. That's such a fun word, homonyms. Homonyms means to get the right word. Now, <laughs> this is crossed out because there a homonym is or homonyms are words that sound the same but have different spellings and different meanings. So write W R I T E if you are to write a word. That is not what I need to use. Okay? R I G H T. Write, write. One means to write with a pencil or a pen to scribble some information down. The other means either a direction or correct, okay? Getting the right one, okay? W O N means I won the game. I'm in the vic I'm victor I'm victorious. I'm the victor. I'm the champion. Okay? But the number one Number one, quantity one, is, is O and E. They sound the same, one, one, but they're spelled different and they mean two different things. Okay, so homonyms are words that sound the same but have different spellings and different meanings. Okay, so again, I'm on page number 250, think A. You're going to have to write homonyms for multiple words. Okay, so I'm going to do five of them with you. Okay, these ones are all mixed up. So just so you know, they're all mixed up. You can go back, you can pause the video, or you can try and follow them along. So we have the first one, our and what one sounds like it? H O U R. Okay. So we have our classroom is empty, or or our classroom is empty, or dinner is in one hour. Okay. Our hour. They sound the same, but they're spelled different and they ha differently and they have different meanings. Okay. Your Y O U R. Your desk is all clean. Y O U R or also sounds the same as Y O U apostrophe R E, which means you are at home right now. Okay? Similar, they sound exactly the same, but two different spellings, two different meanings. Okay, the next one, tied, T I E D. That means I tied my shoe so I would not trip. T I E D. Now there's another tied, which would be T. I, I'm sorry, T-I-E-D is to tie, I tied my shoes. T-I-D-E, the tide of the ocean was coming up towards our blanket on the beach. Okay, the tide comes in and it goes out, the tides of the ocean. Okay, two different tides. They have the same letters, they're just mixed around. They sound exactly the same, but they mean different things. Okay, meet, M-E-E-T. It was so nice to meet you yesterday, okay? Or you have the homonym for meat is M E A T. My mom had to go buy meat from the grocery store for our dinner. Okay, meat. The next, the last one, this is a fun one. G N U says new. Okay, that's a type of animal. The G is completely silent. G N U, G -N -U is new. Okay, that is a fun animal to look up if you have not just because of the spelling. So that also sounds the exact same as N E W. So we have new the animal, or we have new, I can't wait to get a new car. <laughs> Actually, I can't wait to get a new car. Mine's really squeaky. So those are homonyms. They are words that sound the same but have different spellings and different meanings. Antonyms are just the opposite, the best opposite word choice, okay? Look at your assignment to see what your homework is. I'll see you tomorrow.